Hi, welcome to Next Channel. So, hope you remember my most recent episodes, which I shot and released, are about ring buffers architecture. And uh, there are several data structures you can find in Linux kernel source. Uh, we'll use ring buffers, especially the drivers and network stack and uh, you know stuff like that. And uh, after watching uh, these videos, I got even uh, some uh, you know queries from uh, viewers. Uh, they asked, uh, uh, do people uh, use ring buffers in user space? Uh, you know, it is quite uh, 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 frequently used when you need to deal, like I mentioned again, this is, I mentioned in the episode, but I want to repeat, see, if you want to, you know, uh, write your own network stack, if you are writing in user space, and if you want to hold the packets, the in inflow of packets the ingress of packets and you want to process further let it be some type of vpn or some firewall something you are writing a network stack uh, let it be some type of a data plane now uh, in user space uh, or something you are adding uh, with dpdk with the help of dpdk and stuff like that so if you are writing any you know network stack let's not get into uh, some dpdk stuff i'm generally saying if you're writing any network stack you can use uh, like this ring buffer sometimes if you are writing any uh, you know video uh, capture and video processing uh, algorithms uh, some type of engine you know you take a video and then you uh, render it in some other format again you can take that you know frames and you can load these frames into some kind of ring buffer so that uh, you know it is you know keep uh, getting accumulated and then you can process uh, each of this at your will so it is again like i said it is any time you have producer consumer stuff uh, you can use a ring buffer so uh, like i mentioned again you can optionally use uh, the same stuff with arrays itself or you can use with a linked list and it is up to you and in general if uh, people talk about ring buffers typically they are a sort of fixed size elements but again you can use it uh, uh, you can architect with you know linked lists and and then you can even make it bigger and smaller so i thought uh, let me do a small uh, demo uh, i do did some type of demo in the previous episode but i did with uh, you know paint application but i thought this time i do some type of a live demo uh, some uh, kind of you know graphical demo see this is not any c code i don't want to print some kind of you know uh, numbers and values on the screen instead i want to show something which is more animated uh, demo so that you can understand the big picture see uh, yeah in the tutorials i have uh, you know released this article what i can do is once i you know finish this episode i can post it uh, in this page so that you can have a look if you are newly watching this uh, video i recommend you to watch this uh, previous uh, other episodes so that you will get some big picture see i have done a lot of walkthrough in the kernel source explaining where exactly these type of ring buffers are used like uh, device drivers and uh, you know stuff like that so you can see here this is my uh, uh, javascript and php code uh, i spent some time from morning i thought let me do in uh, java applet and again i was uh, uh, stuck with something then i thought let me do in python or something again <laughs> i was stuck with something then i thought okay let me do uh, with my most familiar platform which is a uh, web UA. i can do this animation uh, with some animation tools but i don't uh, you know get that fine control which i can dynamically change here what i do is exactly like you play a video game i can directly control this uh, versus if i do some animation it will be just boring <laughs> where you will be getting some type of you know uh, repeating slideshows or frames of you know pictures so i don't want to get that so that you know i can do some live demo so that uh, i can walk through back and forth and uh, you know you can have that idea in the real time okay so this is my code uh, what uh, i have done is uh, uh, we can take this type of a pie okay this is actually uh, is a circle uh, which is divided with you know uh, it's 360 right so uh, what i did is i divided with 36 uh, elements so in uh, each element is around 10 degrees of you know uh, length okay 
So you can see there currently this buffer is empty. This ring buffer is empty. The start and end are both pointing to zero. Okay. So again, recollect my you know previous episode. You will uh, remember what I meant. Okay. So I can uh, show this that total elements are or items are uh, 36 and uh, total allocated at this point of time is none. So this is the ring buffer. It is empty at this point of time. So we can add items and we can delete items uh, at our will. Uh, we can add and delete at any order. Once there is no items in the ring buffer, it will uh, you know stay as it is like what you are seeing. See the moment I add, you can see there each 10, 10 degrees out of that you know 36 of 360 degrees. You know, I'm just, uh, you know, filling that with a different color. Okay. That small arc. Okay. This is nothing but, you know, Java canvas arc. You can see there. Uh, this is the arc API. So I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I have done all this stuff. I have to calculate. Uh, I mean, I have to populate uh, in radians. So I need to come up with, you know, this formula. Uh, two degrees and uh, this is the you know uh, this is the constant all I need to do is uh, convert the angles into radians and feed it to this RKP. So this is the challenging part and also animating because I am not well versed with JavaScript although I am an expert in uh, PHP this is by far my first time ever <laughs> you know I have done something with uh, you know JavaScript. So you can see there it has totally three elements okay or three items in this ring buffer and it starts with zero uh, okay see this is zero and uh, it ends with uh, you know third item okay this is what so as you add as you add it will be get added in the end right it is getting added to the end and as you delete it will be deleted at the top so you keep adding and you keep deleting them and it will be keep you know uh, uh, it will be keep uh, you know following through that you know ring that's what the name uh, says so this is what happens you add 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 and you delete 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 add 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 delete 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 so this is what i meant you can use this fantastic way ring buffer in any network uh, appliance like a firewall or something like that or even just a router uh, imagine uh, you have the linux router uh, like we have uh, for the home uh, purpose so when there are any uh, ingress of packets if one side is a lan network is 1 gbps uh, lan or home network or office network the other side is uh, 100 mbps internet or uh, you know let it be 200 or 300 mbps uh, broadband what happens is uh, you get more ingress of packets after some time you know packet drops will happen because you can't anymore fill that buffer so what happens is in that scenario you will get a huge inflow of packets few will be uh, sent out at a, you know constant interval again you will get a huge inflow of packets few will be sent out eventually what happens is there, there will be some imbalance you will get more packets getting added and less packets getting moved out of this ring buffer so this happens this happens this happens this happens this happens this happens eventually what happens is <laughs> you know it will become a situation that the buffer will be full you can see there it is start and end or 30 I can't add any more items. See, when these type of situations are, you have other choice that, uh, you know, when you add any items, so you can start replacing that existing ones also. So I have not implemented that in this algorithm. In this algorithm, what I, uh, uh, my objective is, uh, once it is over, uh, I can't add any more items. And when I remove, it will be removing from that, you know, last uh, trailing end. See, this is the trailing end and this is the leading end or the leading edge and the trailing end. So whenever I delete, it will be deleting this and whenever I add, it will be adding there. So this is what happens. You notice here, uh, you know, the start is 4, end is 35. It is, it is a circular one. So once uh, the end reaches 36th item, it will become again 0. So, uh, you know, this is what happens. So you can see that, th I mean, 35th item. So 0 to 35, it is 36 items. Okay. So this is what happens. And again, if I add, uh, once it touches here, you can see here start is 4 and end is 4. And I can't add any more. See, this is what exactly when I was uh, doing this uh, demo code in JavaScript, 
I was struggling, I was uh, doing a lot of errors and then I was fixing the bugs and then eventually I got this uh, whole stuff and even I can just animate this uh, with a keyboard also, I can just do a down arrow so it will remove the items and uh, you know up arrow it will be adding the items and you can see their start is 18, 18, uh, end is 18, I can't add anymore but if you uh, do a real <laughs> code uh, to handle network packets, don't do this way, what you do is you just start replacing your end uh, you know. Uh, uh you know uh, you know the leading edge so uh, you can still able to continue adding the items but what happens is it will be just you know replacing this you know this so let us see yeah see let, uh, this is the 19th item so if you keep adding them what it can do is it can keep replacing the data over here you can do something like that okay so it is up to you uh, in my code I just want to do a simpler uh, demo so I have done like this in the real world it may not be this case it may be that you keep you know overwriting uh, you know the last items actually so you can kind of uh, manage your ring buffer whichever you want so in this case if this algorithm or this way if you use a network buffer which means uh, uh, once the buffer is full and if it is unable to add any packets to the buffer what happens is it will uh, drop all the packets whatever is incoming but it will hold whatever is there as of now in that entire queue uh, which is not good uh, sometimes it is okay to overwrite the older ones and start you know rewriting so I mean again there are several cases cases this way you do or that way you do what you compromise uh, and in this case if you do what happens to any uh, existing TCP connections and if there are any uh, random drops what happens to the performance and stuff like that whereas if it is a situation like you know mostly it is wipe uh, you know UDP or something like that then it's a different story altogether so again I'm saying I have done uh, you know simpler stuff I just spent hardly around two to three hours um, uh, you know selecting the platform and finally I stick with that and I started adding the code to the JavaScript and uh, you know fixing the bugs and uh, again adding the, uh, the features and stuff so that I can make it ready for this you know demo for the video but if you do by yourself uh, then uh, you know abstract it uh, with uh, you know several APIs uh, so that uh, you can choose uh, the way you want to uh, you know orchestrate or organize these items so, so uh, this is what happens so you can see there I have put all these checks whenever I add uh, I uh, do this way so it is uh, you know uh, reach the end see all I do is whenever I add I can add at the end you know uh, last location I'll be keep adding there and whenever I delete it is like you know the leading location wherever it starts I have to remove from there so it's sort of you know this is where it gets confusing but it's quite easy uh, you know conceptually you can uh, draw in a paper sheet of a paper and then uh, make sure what you exactly want and then you can translate the idea into a code so I typically don't write any flowcharts and you know pseudo code I, I start uh, whatever conceptually I think directly I put um, you know into code I feel even this itself is more than enough so this is my way of approach but if you are not uh, you know doing this way uh, you can write your uh, code initially you can uh, do some uh, you know uh, this thing so that um, I sort of you know rough template so that you get used to what exactly you want and then you can translate into a code uh, again like uh, some uh, viewers uh, especially beginners have this confusion is this only possible with uh, you know uh, systems uh, development and stuff like that it is not actually you can do in any language it is just how you allocate and how you manage this uh, you know items in the buffer and you can see there uh, in my code one more interesting thing is see this